Quarantine blues. We empathized, took a complex show, and we simplified, drew on the best ideas, and we synthesized. Because this is jazz. What did you expect? We improvise. EFG London Jazz Festival 2020. It's on. Hello, everyone. And thank you for joining us as we officially launch the run-up to the EFG London Jazz Festival 2020. My name is Fusion. I will be your host and guide as we take a closer look at this year's iconic festival. Today you will hear from artists, friends and partners as well as enjoy some exclusive performances from some of the festival's finest. And Stop the Press will also be sharing the full lineup for the festival for the first time here today. But let's just take a moment, because this year has been a year like no other. Many of us have missed that physical connection with the people we love. So it's more important than ever that we use the hashtag to connect again. So that's We Are Jazz. Use that to share your photographs, your videos, and your comments about how you're enjoying the festival. And after it's all done, come and join us for the official after party on Jazz FM. I'll be in the VIP. I'll see you there. Let's get on with the show. I think that's what a real jazz musician is saying. He's saying, this is who I am, and I'm not willing to compromise. It's something on a higher level in life. The EFG London Jazz Festival means so much to the artists, lifelong friends, sponsors, musicians, and everyone who's involved. They all have something to say. So let's hear a few of their thoughts. It's not just for London, it's for the world. And it brings together so many different kinds of musicians within the jazz umbrella. Uh, there's, nothing, there's nothing like it. I was astonished about how accessible it was, how accessible the content was, um, what a broad range of people it attracted. It's got a mixture of free um, uh, events uh, and also, you know, uh, very high quality paid for events. So it, it, it reaches a really broad audience and, and keeping that going is, I think, is super important. It's been a difficult year for the arts industry and for everyone working in it. That's why it's so important that festivals like this one can go ahead. And I want to thank the organisers for adapting to the situation and finding a way to stage this wonderful event safely. My grandfather, um, Terry Brown, was a jazz trumpet player and record producer. So he introduced me to um, lots of different types of music. He um, played to me a lot of jazz recordings that were um, from live performances. And I remember listening to some, I think there was a Dizzy Gillespie record and um, the crowd were just going wild and I thought oh, wow this happens in gigs that's so amazing you know everyone can find inspiration everyone can be involved you know it's inclusive the real personal driver for me is that I love this music I actually believe that this music can tame the beast in mankind I believe you know this music is less than 200 years old less than 150 years old we don't know what discoveries can be found we want to connect people to adventures in sound and the London Jazz Festival is a whole set of adventures in music and sound and what I love about it is uh, the way that there's always a focus on emerging artists and young artists as well as uh, the, the big established names and during the festival over those those couple of weeks you know um, uh, established artists are rubbing shoulders with with those emerging and you know, inspiration abounds everywhere. I'm very passionate about um, gender equality, racial equality, and I try and get that through my music. And um, I think it's really important to spread a message, you know, for, for good. I know that sounds very cheesy, but you know, that's what keeps me going. We have a huge responsibility to help young talent come forward. And actually this year we've had a record number of applications. And I mean, every year the standard is going up and up. You know, we're really seeing a, a great growth in young talent coming forward, which is very exciting. In 2020, the festival in this very traumatic year means an opportunity to create a sense of community, a sense of belonging, a sense of people coming together and celebrating something 
um, that needs to be about everybody in one room feeling the same energy is something that I really believe in and I think the EFG London Jazz Festival does provide that experience. Live music thrives when people come together. We can still build new collaborations between UK and international artists. Why do you make music? Why do you actually bother? I think that's the thing. Why do you engage with bothering making it? And uh, I think the real reason for that is that you want to help people and things like this. Can you, um, can you give people in your own small way a higher perception of what it means to be human? That's really what it is. That's really the answer to it. And that's why I engage with it. And um, I believe that uh, if you're honest enough and if you tell enough truth in your music, you can honestly do that. You can honestly give people a higher perception of what it means to exist. Now, before we dive deep into the festival, it's only right we bring you some music. We'd like to introduce a rising star from the UK jazz boom, a composer, producer, trombone player, and band leader. She goes by the name of Rosie Turton, and she's produced a special track. She's gonna perform for you at the Total Refreshment Center, a special piece just for us. Now, don't tell Pelin I told you, but she's part of the lineup for this year's EFG London Jazz Festival. Rosie, take it away.
Wow, what a performance. You can catch her entire live set when it streams on the 21st of November. Now, the theme this year for the EFG London Jazz Festival is living in two worlds, which is why we've curated a marathon of digital and live. Now, I've already told you Rose is involved in the show, but to give you the drop on the full lineup, we'd like to introduce you to the director of the festival, Pelin Opchin. Listen up. Musicians, artists, they make the change by molding, transforming, recomposing challenges. This year will be one we will never forget. And we are here to get you a festival we will always remember. EFG London Jazz Festival will celebrate the unifying nature of music by bringing together audiences around jazz with digital streams and live experiences. Living in two worlds, the festival celebrates the UK jazz scene, fosters new productions, bespoke performances and new collaborations. The festival kicks off with a sublime version of Jazz Voice, led by Guy Barker, featuring China Moses, David McAlmond, Cleveland Watkiss and Luca Manning. The show will be also live streamed. Special projects are not to miss. Seed Ensemble celebrates the music of Pharaoh Sanders, who is turning 80 this year. Charlie Parker's musical legacy will revive through the dynamic lands of Tomorrow's Warriors at Church of Sound. Shabaka Hutchins will join forces with Britain Symphonia, while Abel Selo Ochoe will perform with BBC Concert Orchestra. Incredible artists from UK jazz scene, Emma Jean Thackeray, Anthony Joseph, Yaz Ahmed, Binker Golding, Camilla George, Tenderlonius, will all be performing during the festival. International stars such as Linda O, Tigran Hamasian, Vincent Perani, Emil Parisian and Baba Zula will present their live streams throughout the festival. We also have the cutting edge sounds of Gaika, Daniel Thorne and Muller and Liv Cutter John, where we will be streaming the sounds of Between the Lines Festival. Our talent development artists, contemporary new sound discoveries from Europe, celebrating music from Istanbul to Vilnius. All of these artists will join up for a fantastic musical feast. EFG London Jazz Festival also sees the iconic jazz program Jazz 625 return to BBC4, a star-studded lineup featuring Sons of Kemet, Matthew Halsall, Moses Boyd and Sarati Korvar will all be on TV. Several broadcasts on Radio 3, our digital streams and also BBC Young Jazz Musician of the Year will make it possible that the festival is heard by all. Kevin Lagrange will lead mind-opening conversations exploring art as a form of resistance and a means of representation. Orphe Robinson will lead a virtual jazz jam, masterclasses, talks. Musician Shuri's music will flow in our jazz yoga session, connecting our minds, bodies and souls. Among all what happened in 2020, the loss of John Cumming, one of the founders of our festival, shook us. He will always be remembered with the contributions he made to music and musicians. And there is one special tribute not to miss. Our friends at Club Inegales will be broadcasting highlights from the Expect the Unexpected Marathon that John curated with Peter Weigold in 2017. Also in 2020, one of the former directors of our festival, Claire Whitaker, moved on to other roles in the scene. We would like to thank her for the wonderful contributions she made to our festival for bringing it to its status today. The EFG London Jazz Festival is only possible with artists and audiences, but also sponsors. And London's backbone of buzzing music, the clubs, the creative spaces, Total Refreshment Center, Jazz Cafe, Cafe Otto, Vortex, Pizza Express, Ronnie Scott's, the festival is only possible when we join out with these wonderful venues so that we can reach millions of audiences locally and globally. Please don't forget to check our website and our socials to see the full program and follow us up. And then we see you at the EFG London Jazz Festival. I think you can safely say that the team have done themselves proud. Now, anybody who knows the EFG London Jazz Festival will know that we are always in venues across London. But for the first time in the history of the festival, we're giving you access all areas, wherever you are in the world. So if you want to enjoy any of the artists, all you need to do is sign up to the newsletter for all future announcements. 
you can enjoy jazz wherever you are. So to whet your appetite, we'd like to welcome an artist to the stage by the name of Serafi Kua. He's performing a song called Cooley with Kushal Gaia on vocals. Enjoy.
wow. I'm getting goosebumps from the performance. Thank you, Serafi. You can catch his full set on November the 19th, streaming live. Now we told you before, the hashtag is we are jazz. If you're enjoying yourself, use that, let people know. And we're gonna continue with the party after the show. Now after 28 years of memories and stories, this festival is so deeply rooted in the hearts of so many people. The memories of gigs, the performances, and the audience members. So we had an opportunity to sit down and talk to some of our friends, our artists and partners about their favorite moments and also their love of music in general. So check out these special moments. Um, I remember seeing um, Hugh Masekela. Um, it was Hugh Masekela and Larry Willis. And he just captured the audience. You know, it was, it was so quiet, you know. He got everyone's attention and the music was just so powerful, even though it was just a duo. It, um, it, you know, it had real meaning and, you know, it got into your soul. It was great. It was just incredible. It was a masterclass in storytelling as well as performing. And I think that's one of the great things about the London Jazz Festival and maybe the jazz aesthetic in general, is that people, when they're at the top of their game, they tell stories that touch us as human beings, as well as impressing us with music. Because festivals, they just give you permission to look at things differently. It's like almost going to an exhibition where you see things that you might see elsewhere, but you see it in a different context because of what you've heard before in the concert before, what you're going to see in the concert after. And that's what makes festivals special, that someone's thought about it and a whole lot of people have thought about it. Doing their thing on the international music stage, you know what I mean? It's definitely incredible just knowing and being connected to all of these creatives and just doing incredible things, you know what I mean? It's definitely inspiring, definitely beautiful and, you know, long may it continue. We were coming at the end of the show. Um, we stood up to applaud the, the artists and I just took a moment to look round and so many people were happy at that moment and I thought what an amazing uh, privilege to be part of, a small part of making all those people happy. On BBC4 they used to broadcast some of the uh, London Jazz Festival. Sirius put on a uh, short snippet, for maybe about three or four minutes, of a uh, saxophonist named Evan Parker. Man, that woke some stuff up to me, man. I really broadened my mind and I was like man I've got to play music with this guy one day and I did I grew up and I and I did work tried to work hard and eventually met him and yeah we've been making some music together and stuff so that was it that's my favorite personal thing that's happened with uh, hanging out with Jan Cummins you know usually after the gig um, usually at the bar meeting musicians backstage uh, there have been a few concerts that I've done myself that have been quite memorable especially that with, with, with Wrangling, that was quite um, special. Um, last year was special with Monte Alexander. Um, wow, there's just been so many, but it's actually meeting people that I haven't seen for quite a while from the jazz community, that's been good. The first time I really understood jazz was when my father took me to Ronnie Scott's when I was a child. And I'm not sure to this day actually how I managed to get in there, but I was a I was a trained classical pianist, I'm a trained classical pianist, and he took me to hear Oscar Peterson. And uh, that would date me horribly, but no, but he did. And then that just like watching, I just never forget as a child watching his hands glide over the keys and thinking, I'll never be able to do that. And then the other day I was in the car with my 25 year old son and he said, Mom, I've discovered this great guy, uh, Dave Brubeck. <laughs> and, uh, so I was delighted that, you know, so he's now developed a passion for jazz and I'm ashamed to say that I um, went home and tried to, to play Take Five and just completely messed it up, unfortunately. So. There's some wonderful concerts, as there always are, for the last 28, 29 years. This year will be slightly special, I believe. Come down and hang out with us, man. Wonderful words and fantastic stories. We can't wait to create even more memories for this festival, so make sure you share yours and use the hashtag. Now coming up next, we have the bassist and composer, Linda O. She's a prominent figure in the US jazz scene and is known as the bass player for Pat Metheny. For us, she has an exclusive digital stream, but for now, enjoy her new composition, The Noise of Us. Hi everyone, I'm Linda Mahan O, and I'm so excited to be at the EFG London Jazz Festival this year. I'm looking forward to meeting everyone virtually until the next time we can meet again in person. Thank you. 
Amazing stuff. You now know what you need to do on November the 16th, because that's when you'll get to hear her full online performance. It's not to be missed. Now we've announced a lineup for this year's EFG London Jazz Festival, and I'm sure you'll agree, it's spectacular. There are so many people behind the scenes who make it happen. For them, this is their passion, this is their heart. So let's take a moment to hear from them. If you go to a great gig, and you feel the energy around you, when, when you've got a couple hundred people or maybe uh, a thousand or one thousand five hundred people applauding. It's a very powerful thing. So the talks that I'm curating, Conversations in the Era of Black Lives Matter, basically the series is a response to everything that's been happening. To discuss issues like BAME as, um, as a term which is very contentious. 
as something which I don't think we should blindly accept. I'm the only person who has a right to say, well, this is, this is what I am and these are the terms that should be used to describe me. Music makes me feel human and it kind of gives me an insight into what humanity can do and what it can be. We've got some great coverage of the Jazz Festival coming out on Radio 3. Um, we've got uh, the opening concert, Jazz Voice, live uh, from Cadogan Hall. Uh, we've got a J to Z Ledge that evening, uh, and that's only the beginning uh, of a Jazz All Nighter. Jazz Fix, we're going to have some archive concerts from Chick Career and Wayne Shorter, and some curated jazz mixes, and it's going to be absolutely fantastic. I've um, managed to reach people um, from my own background, so people um, from um, uh, the Middle East and, um, you know, and Muslim women as well. So it's just been, I never thought I'd be able to reach these audiences who can relate to me and I can relate to them. And, you know, yeah, it's, it's tremendous. What people can um, expect from my performance this year at the EFG London Jazz Festival was, um, different types of music together. So I fuse Arabic music with jazz and electronica. Um, so you'll be hearing music from my uh, most recent album, Polymnia, and the album before that, The Saboteurs. Um, you know, my music has been described as psychedelic Arabic jazz, so be expecting some kind of, yeah, otherworldly um, psychedelic experience. <laughs> so, so on television we have I don't know if, if people saw Jazz um, 65, which we did, was a live jazz night um, that we did on BBC4 uh, last year, which is very successful. So we're going to do a new one of those. Um, and then we have the final of Young Jazz Musician, which we're very excited about, lots of very extraordinary new talent. Um, and then we're showing a beautiful theatrical film, new theatrical documentary of Ron, about Ronnie Scott, because I'm so, so happy that we have this film because um, so it's, uh, it was the first place that I went as a child, so I'm like so thrilled to be able to tell the story. And Ronnie's is such an important place and, uh, you know, has seen, you know, so many great talents. I usually don't know what's going to happen until I actually put the instrument straight to my lips and then, then we're gone, man. Um, that's the excitement of it. That's what we practice, is spontaneity. We practice spontaneity as jazz musicians. So. You know, you don't just don't say nothing, man. And you walk out on stage and you don't say nothing to your musicians or anything. You just look at them and then when you find that moment, then it's gone, man. And I, I don't want to use the word chaos to denigrate it. I mean chaos in terms of you just don't know what's going to happen sometimes with some of these, you know, these great musicians I've got to work with, you know, the Steve Williamsons and all these. It doesn't matter what he says to you, it's going to be something different. You know, and it's going to be something great. So, um, yeah, we've got Moses Boyd, Nathaniel Facey and Shirley Tete at the Church of Sound and also at the Spice of Life. We have um, Out of the Loop, Into the Live. Uh, we have two concerts on the, the 20th of November. Um, Dennis Rollins, Alexander Topchevska are playing uh, tributes to Parker, but also tributes to, to Michael Brecker. And then um, I think on the 20th of November, we have three female bands just playing some music. In tough times, jazz can be a tonic for Londoners of all backgrounds, helping to bring us together at a moment when we still need to keep our physical distance. So I wish you all, from the performers and the production staff to the organizers and the audiences, a special, soulful and successful festival. I can't wait for the London Jazz Festival to begin, and I hope I'll see you there. I'm Kevin Legendre, and I look forward to seeing you at the EFG London Jazz Festival. Let's be honest, we could not have produced this festival without the help of our phenomenal sponsors. So on behalf of the festival team, we would like to thank our headline sponsor, EFG Private Banking. You guys have been fantastic. We also want to show love to our other sponsors and partners, so many of them. ABRSM, Arts Council England, BBC Radio Free, Champagne Fiano, Edwardian Hotels, Esme Fairbairn, Help Musicians UK, Jazz FM, Jazz Wise, Night Dreamer, PRS Foundation and Signature Brew. 
all of you have enabled us to bring this festival to the people. We want to thank you for joining us. We hope you had a good time. We've had fun, but the fun continues online. So make sure you check out the website for the full lineup. Also follow us on social media so you can find out about the after party and future announcements. I personally recommend the newsletter. That's where you're going to get the drop on all the other information. And of course, we told you this is virtual and physical. So use the hashtag. What's the hashtag? We are jazz. Use that. We can have a party together and connect. So on behalf of EFG London Jazz Festival 2020, I want to say thank you for joining us. Be safe out there. Make sure you wash your hands and cream your skin. We're out. Peace. <laughs>